Hey there everyone, welcome back to my channel and this is Raxus and pardon for my avatar, I'm just a really shy guy and I don't like to show my face that much. But anyway, so with regards to the video that I posted a while ago, it was about the province of Ontario planning to allow internationally educated nurses, um, not just Filipinos because I don't want to like tell you guys that only Filipinos can enter this program. I never said that. I said IENs, Internationally Educated Nurses, to be able to work in the hospitals in the province of Ontario, not just Ottawa, which is part of Ontario, but only for Ontario. Okay, I just want that to be clear. So a little bit of disclaimer, if you don't, uh, if you like um, have like misgivings with the information that I'm uh, pointing out here, I will try to add all of the relevant government website links in the description below so that you can read for yourself. Okay, I tried to add that in the previous video, but then I got a little bit of insult from some people. But anyway, it's all good. I'm just only here to help you guys. As someone who is here in on Ottawa right now, I'm doing my best to gather information by myself and I would like to share it to you guys because if you have plans in coming coming to Canada, if you are in Canada already but living in another province or you are in, in Ontario but did not know about this information because you were busy with your work as a nurse, I can relate to that one. I am here to help you guys out. And this is just information from the College of Nurses of Ontario. It has been reported in news all over Ottawa and I hope that this will be useful for you guys. Now let me just do something. Uh, animes. I'm gonna let my avatar become a little bit bigger. There you go. <laughs> okay, let's start. Um, this is the website from the College of Ontario that you can see here, guys. This is the news moving nursing ap applicants into the system. So by the title alone, they will only cater to applicants to the CNO only. And those under the NNAS, uh, NNAS phase for now would not be included with this program. You have had to have met the minimum requirements of the CNO. Uh, so I'm going to read it here. The College of Nurses of Ontario and Ontario Health are partnering to help address the health human resource needs of the province by launching the, this one, the Supervised Practice Experience Partnership. This partnership provides an opportunity for applicants I, got, I just got the Twitter news here. I don't know how to turn off the uh, notifications. Okay, this partnership provides an opportunity for applicants currently going through the registration process to become nurses. So to participate in a work experience to help complete their evidence of practice and language proficiency registration requirements. So let's just skip all of that. You can read the, the whole article. I'll give this as link number one in my description below and then we'll go to the supervised practice experience partnership program so this is the overview the supervised practice experience partnership program is a partnership program <laughs> between the college of nurses of ontario cno and entire health and other cno approved organizations the program offers applicants the option to become to, to option to complete a supervised practice experience in Ontario to demonstrate current nursing knowledge, skill, judgment, and language proficiency skills. By participating in the program, applicants will have an opportunity to meet their evidence of practice and or language proficiency requirements to enter practice as a nurse. Now, before I arrived here in Canada, people were, t were telling me that you need two years or else your two years will expire. Uh, it's 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 more nuanced than that. So NNAS will actually uh, and, and NCNO and CNO in particular will take your five years, the last five years, uh, the last five years of your employment into account. Where in 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 those five years, you would have to need to have like two years worth of regular work as a nurse as evidence of practice, and if you have less than that. Then you need to like they they will they might try to say like you need to go back to to the, to to your country no not to your country to to go back to a hospital to work as a nurse and since you can't 
legally work as a nurse in in any province, assuming that you're still new in Canada, then you're so you, the only way you can do that is to go back to the country you're from, Philippines or where wherever, and then work there for the minimum required number of hours, and then apply again for CNO or continue or submit that to the CNO. So now what they're doing is they will they will let IENs with that specific requirement, aside from the English uh, requirement. They will, that you can do it here in in Ontario instead. So that's what they are they are talking about. This is uh, this isn't a program for IENs who have just arrived and are starting their NNAS. That's the thing. It's not for NNAS applicants. It's for the CNO applicants. Now here we have your information for applicants. Let's start from the top. So the following information is for RN and RPN applicants interested in participating in the SPP. Can we call it SPEP? Practice program. Let's just call it practice program. So eligibility applicants are eligible if they have met all the registration requirements except evidence of practice and or language proficiency. So the language proficiency these days, I think um, if you have an employer who will attest to your language proficiency, then you would, uh, uh, this will be skipped for you. But otherwise, um, you may, uh, um, I think they will gauge your language proficiency while you work. Evidence of practice must have expired no more than five years before applying to the program. Check the application, applicant portal to see what requirements you have outstanding to determine if you are eligible. So you have to have practice within the five years before applying the program. So CNO will also notify eligible applicants through the portal. So if you have if you have a CNO account, chances are you have may you may have had received your an, an email with regards to this one. So check your inbox, check your emails from CNO. So how do you start? If you have received a confirmation email from CNO indicating your eligibility, you can in express your interest to participate by completing the supervised practice experience intake form provided in the email. Your eligibility must be confirmed by CNO before you can proceed, so you can't just go to a hospital and ask to be hired. Once eligibility is confirmed, you have indicated your interest, Ontario Health will match you in appropriate organization. This feels like residency matching that they do with doctors. Like You won't be able to choose which hospital you are going to apply on. Uh, you, may you can express which hospitals, but you will be matched instead. And it's all because you are technically under training, you are under supervision. Applicants must share their confirmation of eligibility with the organization before starting the program. And if you believe you're eligible but you have no email yet from CNO, contact this email you have here. And then before applying to the program, you may wish to consider reflecting on your learning needs to determine if this program is the right program for you right option for you so program expectation this is what I've been wondering like what is the program expectation for this one I wonder if I need to increase the okay let's increase it like that so that you guys can read okay program expectation I should have done that from the start I'm so sorry I'm new to the streaming thing for this program applicants e too much <laughs> too much too much Program eligibility, uh, where was I? Program expectations. For this program, you will be matched with the CNO approved organizations. Applicants will go through an orientation process to become familiar with the organization, practice setting, and what to expect for the practice experience, supervised practice experience. Assess the learning needs, identify learning goals, develop a learning plan for their supervised practice experience. Complete a minimum practice of 140 hours under supervision of a qualified preceptor. Uh, practice hours may extend depending on your individual healthcare needs. Let me just check like 140 hours divided by 8 hours for a regular shift. So yeah, almost like 17.5, 18 days. Um, at most, you will be doing 120, oh no, 12 hours per day but still we don't know this part you, you will learn it in the uh, during the orientation process Com uh, gain relevant current nursing practice under the supervision of an N uh, nurse practitioner rn or rpn preceptor 
So RPNs can be supervised by RPN, RN, and nurse practitioner, but the RN applicants can only be supervised by either RN or nurse practitioner preceptor. So we have here complete an initial self, final self evaluation related to the application of CNO standards and guidelines, receive feedback from preceptors and have opportunities for additional learning. Preceptors will complete evaluations using the same criteria as applicants. So accountabilities, what would we be your accountabilities? during the program. So throughout your participation in the program, you must not use the title RN and RPN. These titles are restricted to CNO registered members only. Clearly explain to other clients, uh, to others including clients, the capacity in which you are practicing for. So I guess this is a uh, this is important uh, in in the Philippines we we have to like introduce ourselves, we who we are during our rounds, like I'm nurse so and so. So this one you we have to say that we are a CNO applicant applying to register as a XXX. I'm completing a supervised pre practice exper experience as part of my requirements to enter the nursing profession under super under the supervision of a qualified supervisor. Only provide care you are competent to provide. So I highly doubt that you would be providing like um, a, um, surgery or whatever that, that that is invasive that we used to do in the Philippines, like assisting in surgery and stuff. We do not supervise, monitor, and direct performance of others with no exception. So you can't be a prima donna <laughs> in the workplace and tell the wardman that do this and do that. So we are not able to de delegate a controlled act or you are not able to delegate a controlled act. So what are controlled acts in, by their de definition? Eh, no. Go back, right click, open new tab so delegation okay it's more of like independent and dependent nursing uh, controlled act of administering a substance by injection yeah you can't do that I, I think also you, we would not be able to give any any uh, oral meds I, I don't think so not not for the late for the early part of the program anyway program completion when you complete the program your pre preceptor must Complete and submit the SPEP completion form to CNO. CNO will review the documents to ensure that you have met the requirements to complete your registration in the general class. Once approved, you will receive a notification through the applicant portal. So these are the facts. Page last reviewed January 10. Let's just look at the this. For, I'll open it here. So these are the standards and guidelines for the whole program itself no this is guidelines for everyone oh, these, these are uh, quite in-depth so you have the code of conduct so I guess even though we are working under supervision we may need to follow all of these uh, let's take a look at the facts how many hours do I have to practice to meet supervised practice experience Okay, minimum of 140 hours. That's actually better than going back to the Philippines and working for six months or so. Will this be... Okay, this is the part that we need to know. Will this be a paid supervised practice experience? Once a match has been determined, the applicant and employer will discuss payment for the supervised practice experience as part of the hiring process. Are my learning needs reviewed and approved by CNO to ensure they are appropriate? No, CNO does not assess or approve the learning needs you identify for your practice ex experience. Applicants are responsible, okay, wow, reflecting and determining their own unique learning needs based on a variety of factors such as experience, education, practice, setting time, time in or away from the role. Of it. So I guess if you could say like I want to work in the operating room, you would have to say that I'm capable of doing it, but these are my needs when you are you want to become an operating room nurse. So these are questions for the organizations. Uh, let's skip all of that. Let's just take a look at the form that is needed to uh, that you will uh, that that is going to grade you in a sense. So we are going to take a look of this one. Please save this PDF to your computer. Applicant consent form, organization form, applicant super, supervised practice. I hereby certify that. Well, this is very vague. 
primary language that's for the English did the apl applicant ability to communicate in English or French yes is an offer yes or no it just says total number of hours completed I there's not even like that will tell you that the applicant is not good at the job or not like Canada is so good I hereby certify that the information is provided is accurate and complete okay <laughs> so this is a good web page I will include this in the links below if in case you want to know about the standards and guidelines especially since they have here the code of con conduct that you can download everything for your own uh, for posterity's sake and and read about it like these are something that that would be good information for you so medication we have the ass practice decision tool nurse practitioner is different I don't know how to become a nurse practitioner yet I would have to start as a uh, RPN registered practical nurse so in summary you have had to start have you you should have had started you should have started CNO your CNO application and that uh, you have finished your NNAS and started your CNO application and the only requirements that you need are the uh, standard uh, the safety practice and your uh, English proficiency language proficiency either French or English and the offer of, of employment I don't know if you would be offered employment immediately as a nurse or the fact that you have to become a nurse first if you complete the CNO while doing the program and then the hospital will offer you um, or they, they, they in the in other news they actually said long-term care centers like in, in, in retirement homes not just hospitals I think they fo focus also in long-term care centers so depending on your your employment offer I, I we don't know yet if it's going to affect your CNO application but otherwise um, I tried calling them and unfortunately let's see here contact us so I tried calling them but they said that their call center quick Q <laughs> quick oh my god if any from CNO he like hears me say quick <laughs> they might fail my language proficiency <laughs> so our call center Q has reached capacity we will respond to all inquiries but we will not be able to take further calls today we will reopen Monday 8 30 a.m. so the so yeah uh, yeah you can call about this one I will include all of the links in the video below thank you very much for watching I would appreciate it if you um, I would appreciate it if you like and subscribe uh, comment anything below like if you want me to call a specific hospital because you need to know some information I will help you guys I just need your support in this channel share if you want to support me just even your like and your your subscription is more than enough to make me happy <laughs> thank you once again this is Seraxis and have a good day stay safe and God bless